Well, hello, it's uh, Franz Cantor here again, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, <laughs> furniture mover. Um, just let me uh, get positioned here. Doing another uh, caricature and um, the subject that I've uh, picked today is uh, this actor here, and that's John Hurt. All right, so I'll just uh, explain a little bit about him you can see uh so he uh he died recently uh 2017 he was aged uh, 77 he was, he was born in 1940 and um he's been in some fantastic films like um doc well the doctor who film the doctor who special and i claudius uh series called the storyteller which is uh Awesome. It was a Jim Henson show. If you could uh, catch that, that would be awesome. Um, what else? The Elephant Man, which I actually haven't seen. Um, American Express, of course, 1984. Um, the new version, not the 50s one. Viva Vendetta. And, uh, you know, we'll always remember him, obviously, as, um, as the victim of the facehugger in uh, Alien. So he's a really interesting uh, actor, and uh, what we're going to discover here, I think, is going to be quite interesting. So I've been trying to work out um, what's the best version of him, of John Hurt. You know, obviously, this is from Alien, 1979. So very young there. This is the Elephant Man around the, the same era. This is a bit uh, older. This uh, actually, no, this is, a, I think, an early, this is an earlier film, I believe. And uh, I remember seeing it, but I can't remember the, I can't remember the, <laughs> the whole thing. I know he was hung uh, for some reason. I think it could maybe something to do with Ten Wellington Place or something. I don't know. That could be even the film. Uh, this is from, um, um, Midnight Express. So this is the storyteller. So I don't know what uh, Doctor Who. This is a young, dapper version of himself. He's a very iconic actor. I thought this would be a perfect uh, example to work from because there's a lot of geography in this face. There's telling a lot of a lot of. There's a lot of story there, which I think we can. Uh, play with. So what I've been trying to do is create something to play with the shapes. And I found um, there is a lot of like geography, a lot of roads and creases and wrinkles and things like that, which give the face a lot of meaning. You know, it's, it's a lot of, um, it, it's very important to sort of capture those uh, details, I think, for me anyway. In caricature, my take on caricature is a way of simplifying the difficult and then exaggerating. So you're kind of uh, moving um, elements around the face, um, making things larger, other things smaller, um, creating a hierarchy. So the sort of face that uh, I'm looking at is something very elongated and um, very expressive. So it's almost like the, the bottom jaw has been, the bone has been taken out of the, uh, of the skull. So it's kind of like Boris here <laughs> in a way. Okay, so it's very, very, I want to try to keep it very... Um, true in the amount of details and things but obviously you know i need to i have a, a, a need to exaggerate certain aspects one of them would be you know his nose which uh, has taken on a almost a life of his own he has a very big uh a very big uh, upper lip the skin area the distance between the nose and the mouth is very pronounced so in drawing the the face, in drawing any face that you want to sort of 
rely on uh, a recognition factor so it's actually a person. You need to concentrate in this sort of area here, the eyes, the, the nose, and the mouth, in a sort of a, um, a dialogue between these elements on how they look next to each other or referencing one to the other. Okay, because there's a lot of lines that uh, go around the nose and, you know, end up around the mouth and, and uh, they, a lot of lines that sort of start at the, at the nose and go up into the brow and around the eyes and things. So there's a lot of uh, movement in the face itself. And this is sort of like a gesture. It's, a, it's, a, it's sort of uh, gestures are movements in space uh, of the body, usually. Um, but there is a gestural feel in the movement of forms in such a confined area. Now, with faces, and it's very true with actors, obviously, they're great communicators. So you want to get a lot of uh, activity going on in the, in the face. So that's something to, to, um, we have to think about. The other thing, too, is uh, when we're drawing, we're drawing um, a three-dimensional construct. So it's sort of like a sculpture in a way. Okay, So we like to think of the light source as creating a... Uh, a shadow that is descriptive of the forms and in this case the shadows are falling clearly on the uh, on the right hand side of the face so there you have it that's what we've got so we're, we're working with this uh, this kind of construct so I've I've actually taken a mishmash of these ideas and and created something uh, very quickly on tone paper. So we're using tone paper. So we're going to be exploring the possibilities of uh, of a tonal drawing in every sense of the word, but we're going to have fun with this. This is, very, this is a very, very interesting uh, character. So let's, uh, let's try to press on. Right, here we go. We're going to be using a brown pencil. This is a a polychromo. This is Indian red. Um, I also have other um, pencils uh, like this one here, which is, I think, a, it could be, it's another Indian red, I think, or a terracotta, maybe. This is a, a Prismacolor. Prismacolors are softer pencils, so they're notorious for breaking, um, especially this, the whites. This is a, a white um, Prismacolor. Uh, we're also going to be using a black Faber-Castell uh, polychromo as well. And we're not using the blue. And uh, let's press on. Let's try to find our, our, um, our person here. So um, the, what am I actually looking for here? The, the face, the angle of the face. Let's use him. So the angle of the face is slightly down, looking down. So you've got the full um, uh, ability of the eyes to look out from underneath these big skin um, uh, areas of, of uh, fatty tissue. Um, eye, the upper eyelids and the brows, the beginning of the brows. So these are things that are creating the, this incredible uh, expression uh, in his face. Um, so these are, these are things you have to sort of consider. The anatomy of the object, of the character that you're drawing, whether it be a portrait or a caricature, you have to think about these things. So the angles and um, uh, rotation of the head, you know, these things are, are um, uh, they're affected by um, perspective. And you need to think about perspective, you know, when while you're drawing. So it's not sort of like a stop, apply perspective, and then keep going. It's something that you have to, to create um, on an ongoing in an ongoing fashion through the drawing itself, right? So it's when you're making decisions, you you test these decisions on knowledge of. Um, 
anatomy, knowledge of uh, proportion, your, your ideas of proportion, and, um, and perspective. So it's to keep the picture grounded in some form of uh, truth. So truth is, in a drawing, it's things that we can see and feel fairly satisfied that they're representative in, you know, correctly representative. So an eye has a certain shape. You need to think about, you know, while you're drawing, because then otherwise, you know, you, um, the symbol making process of the brain could creep in and, uh, Spoil your fun. Sometimes symbols are a good way of uh, simplifying the difficult as well, but overuse of them and over reliance on them is, is something that we try not, not to not to do. Um, just be warned though, this is going to take a while. There's a going to there is a lot of lines. And uh, two things about that. One is I hate counting. So I don't like counting. I might get the number of wrinkles wrong. <clears throat> Just be aware of that. So I'll base, I'm looking at putting them in the right space, the right area. But just be aware that, you know, the actual number of wrinkles and things uh, I might get wrong. Okay. All right. So because there's a lot of them it's going to take me a long time <laughs> to draw this uh what have i done um it's a great subject he's a great subject look at the uh expression it's it's all, I'm, you cannot get this from from anyone else you know he's really really incredibly um Empathetic, em empathic, empathic, not empathetic, that's pathetic. Um, very empathic. He's got these large uh, dilated pupils, which kind of make him look simian in a way, almost like a chimpanzee. You know, how sometimes they're, they have these sort of large um, dis uh, distended pupils and dark. Um, sclera so that the whites of the eye is dark it's red bloodshot or something you know so it's a very um, like a sun I imagine chimpanzees like in gorillas and things they have a sort of a sun bleached um, environment and um, you know and that kind of creates this uh, these um, hurt eyes or hurt looking eyes very very expressive um, powerful so the other thing about uh, John is his voice of course um, it's an iconic voice in and of itself you know so he's certainly the complete package as far as um, powerful acting is concerned so we're going to find uh, our way around the face within the confines that we've placed you know that we've moved the goalposts so we're going to meet kick in the ball all over the field and that's only as it should be so we can find new directions and relationships and effects it's very interesting so I'm looking at this uh, there's a lot to pay attention to so I might get quiet um, that's another warning I might get quiet here but just be aware that I've got my eye on the reference and I'm I'm sort of you know really into the the contours the shape 
of the individual elements of the face, so the direction of lines, the, the intensity of lines. So these are all uh, very powerful um, effects, I think, from looks like sun or weather. There's a lot of erosion going on here. So if you try to imagine um, the face as a landscape, there's a hell of a lot of erosion here. And that's really brought out a lot of the um, character, you know. And if you think about uh, expressions and thoughts that play over the face from the mind, right? They play over the face and they create furrows and they create cracks and they create wrinkles and things like that and it's very very evident in his face you know it's it's like it's um this is uh, if you want to talk about the erosion of landforms of the face here's a textbook picture for you so there you go it's a beautiful beautiful face so you know when you look at when you look at uh, faces, you can you can tell you can see the the uh, anatomical properties. The you know always referencing the skull, and um, so you can tell the uh, the anatomy underneath. But you know what has transpired to create these unique um, patterns he is mind-boggling. It's fascinating how much this uh, face has changed, especially like, you know, even from his younger, his younger days, you could see that there's an incredible amount of uh, weathering here erosion going on a lot okay so um, again you know there's there's a lot of lines here so I'm only really I'm only really guessing I'm I can't there's so many lines I can't count Great, and look how they, look how beautifully the wrinkles um, continue throughout the tissue, throughout the different, around the different muscles. It's really incredible. Ah, I almost wish I had a face that could tell this much, a story like this. It's something um, incredibly human and poignant. There's a lot of things happening in this face, a lot of suffering and, you know, anguish and joy and um, not a lot of anger. There's no things. He doesn't get angry very often. Uh, I can certainly tell. There's a lot of um, activity in the brain. See this uh, division here happening and these broken lines up here. So there's a lot of conflicting thoughts and emotions and things. Uh, I could do with that. That bring it down there, I think. So I'm kind of, you know, losing a lot of the The anatomy, because there's such a such a, a a great amount of erosion happening here, um, it's just incredible. It's like finding it's like a a Rosetta Stone of a of a of a strange language, and this face is uh, a 
it just speaks volumes but it's you know a lot of it is in an unknown tongue I hope I got the number of wrinkles right. Um, no, I haven't, but yeah, nearly. Uh, what's this one? Join. This one joins to this one, yeah. Almost there. Okay. Pencil's great for uh, depicting hair. You know, you could just basically grab them and grab it and create these tufts and they have a beautiful um, movement and, and, a, and a gesture of their of their own hair is such a beautiful thing to draw fur as well like if you're drawing animals you know um, these strokes rep are so representative of hair and um, they just it's just so natural to have have that okay so I'm going quiet again uh, the um, okay I'm gonna build in some highlights in here it's just well beautifully lit um, you know the amount of shadows in there and then even in the shadows there is enough detail to draw so I can perfect can see absolutely you know, within the dark confines of the caverns of this mountain, this landscape, I'm finding a lot of um, context and elements to study and depict and to draw, you know. Beautiful, beautiful face. What a great subject. almost like you know why why didn't I draw him before so let's see remember the shading but that it'll it'll come if, you know if it doesn't sort of uh, appear straight away don't uh, don't stress so there's a lot here to catch we're going to be using probably a white uh, Posca which is an acrylic marker, which is going to help kick up the notch of um, contrasts. So that's going to be exciting. What a great subject. So, um, yeah, I first uh, noticed John's work, obviously, in Alien in 79. I never saw Elephant Man for some reason. I, I don't know why. It just never came up. It was, must have been busy. Look at those lines there. Woo, that's like a cracked mud. It's great. Okay, cool. So, uh, we're missing something. We're missing the big, the big uh, landmark. These uh, incredible folds under his eyes, um, which echo everything's you know beautifully uh, sinuous and and connected. So it's a really nice um, shapes that we're dealing with here. Very, very cool. Uh, you know, and getting down into these little details and things, the, f the folds that uh, are um, created, the, the, the wrinkles that are created from the folds of skin, and then they in turn are, are broken up by smaller lines spider-like that crawl over the face love it um as i said to you before 
there's so much detail in here I'm, I'm tending to ignore a lot of the uh, geometry or the anatomy in some respect because of the um, the attitude the the angles and the you know the descriptiveness of these lines so I'm really into this it's a it's a he's a great subject good stuff here we go right now we're thinking about the shadows remember the light direction I've simplified his nose somewhat so that's uh, that's a good thing I think I hope um, now we need to hit the shadows make them relate properly so a lot of the I've exaggerated some of the perspective here so a lot of it is um, wrapping around this new shape of the head which I've given him no. so oh hang on okay Wow, there's such a lot to um, count, isn't there? There's an awful lot of um, furrows and, sh and wrinkles and things. Okay, I'll simplify. Hmm, don't know. We'll do that. Sort of. That looks all right. Some lines coming down across. It's a lot of like it's very cracked mud. Uh, the texture you can see pores in the skin. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of this uh, stuff because it's too. It's way too subtle. But uh, it'd be nice if I could get as as much in there to give it personality. You know, we need his personality in there. And that's given by the trying to capture an expression which is a thought so think about that you've got a pencil you're using a pencil to catch thoughts spooky Ooh. so there you go these details represent thoughts feelings and you're catching them and enhancing them clarifying them so the photogra the photographer's really good, but you know it's more interpretive now, and this is where the drawer comes into play uh, because the um, the details that you're putting in are an interpretive. Uh, it's in an interpretive fashion. So. All right. Okay, I'm just stylizing this. Uh, I like the leather jacket uh, in the photo. I just want to stylize it a little bit. I like the fact that the collars are up because that gives it an unexpected shape to play with. That's good. Um, so, you know, sh um, leather has a very particular texture, obviously, um, to take time to build up. So I don't know if I'm able to do that within the time frame. I'll, I'll try. Maybe just refer to it a little bit. I don't want to draw too much attention again from the face either, because it's that's my prime focus here. Duh, obviously. <laughs> so that's 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 most satisfactory. So far, so good. Uh, 
Oops, that's not good. Uh, that'll do. Clean up that space. Neat and then always be neat. Uh, you gotta be neat. So subjects play a big part in the ideas in you know and sometimes you get you know carried away with I'm gonna do this I'm gonna twist the face this way and they're gonna twist the face that way but then I thought you know if I do that and I'll start to lose I might lose a lot of the wrinkles and things and the referencing the uh, all of these great details so let's get into the um, we're using black pencil now we've just we've built the forms out so it, I like the way it's going now we need to establish some hierarchy in terms of uh, dark and light so usually you know you start caricatures with a broad shape and then you get into the eyes probably and as I said the mask zone the eyes and nose and the mouth so once you have those things you've put in a lot of effort to make them relevant and make them true to um, the the reference I suppose that in not in terms of shape but in terms of uh, of uh, relevant detail so this is it's going to be interesting isn't it the way that his eyes are lit um, it almost looks like he has no white in his eyes the stretching into the tissue and there's a reflected light underneath this um, Oh, it's uh, okay so the tissue is laid over here as you can see from this okay and these hollows are formed because of their proximity these hollows I'll show you the hollows that you see around the top of the nose are formed because of the proximity to to these orbits Okay, you can start to see that the, the, the rock strata, the bone strata, the bone underneath the flesh is turning certain directions. And this, is a, uh, this, this causes the muscles to create these um, depressions. And over time, when the muscles become more elastic or more relaxed, they create deeper impressions. So that's what's going on here with the geography of his face. There's a lot of uh, movement and in the erosion there's a lot of movement and displacement of uh, details. Very, very, very interesting man. Okay, love that. All right, so you know again this is going to be a bit of a a, a, um, a process it's a lot to cover Mark. I've got to map this out properly all the creeks all the little roads all the parks you know the bus shelters all of these things are all in there so I've got to reference them. I have to put some drawings in there, you know. So the best way to, um, I guess, to focus on drawing something difficult, complex like this, is to just start and forget about the complexity of it. Focus on one thing, you know, an eye. Just focus on that. If you can get that right, then the rest should come together 
So there's a lot of uh, reflections coming up into his uh, into his eye from below, which is interesting. I don't. He has uh, gray eyes, I think, but. I just suddenly had a Gandalf moment. I thought, am I drawing Gandalf? Um, this, but, you know, one geezer looks like the other. Um, I just had a, like a scary Gandalf moment that um, suddenly realized, hang on, he's looking. Oh no, he's looking like him. Some, you know, there, there's a similar, there's certain similarities in, in, in faces and things. Sometimes you'll see elements of this character or that character underneath. Um, and uh, there's literally nothing you can do about it because um, you're committed to certain things. And it just means that you've gone, um, you've gone very close to another familiar landform. Okay. That's all it means. So don't let it throw you. If, if suddenly your caricature looks, starts to look like somebody else other than the intended subject. So don't, um, don't be too hard on yourself. Wow, look at these lines here. Have you ever seen the, I've, you know, I've seen photographs of uh, people living hard life in the desert and things like that. And, and their faces take on these incredible um, properties, like they look like the land, they look like mountains and valleys and rock outcro rocky outcrops and things like that. And, you know, this is definitely uh, caused by, you know, drought and bushfire and things he's had all of these he's had bushfires in his face so there's a you know there's so much story in here you don't know where to start there's a scary amount of uh, story the narrative here is uh, incredibly um, complex and diverse and um, detailed that's the thing you know it's the detail of this story of his face it's really incredible all right so let's continue push on so i'm just helping some of the lines stand out a little bit more and we're going to be using a white pencil to build up still more uh, contrast and structure and that's going to be fun. So the the direction, if you see sometimes, you have to act instinctively almost with uh, the process sometimes. You know, so if you see a wrinkle um, in a certain shape, you want to um, uh, exaggerate it sometimes, then you should do it because that's how it, as you approach it, you know, that's how you feel, right? Sort of finding a direction that... Uh, that is true to what you want to do. Remember, the number one rule is to entertain yourself. So as long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. It doesn't really. It's not there. So um, in other words, you have to enjoy the process. Otherwise, you won't benefit from it. And when I say benefit, it's like the, I'm getting an invaluable amount of uh, details and things here which I am really appreciating and uh, you know it's telling me a lot so um, It's really good at pencil is really good at uh, depicting 
here and fur and you know because the, the lines are very representative of uh, of those shapes it's a lot of spiky I think he's got product in there it's very So you just gradually creep up the head and, you know, think of uh, all the details as sort of a, in a general sense, the, the shapes, the gestures of the main shapes of the tufts of hair rather than individual hair. So don't, you know, um, simplify too much, but be aware of the, you know, individual shaped um, components of the hair rather than individual hairs themselves so that look like in tufts rather than ran you know well it's random but individuals groups lots of groups lots of shadows um, you know enhancing these and I'm thinking when I'm bringing in this the lighter elements they're going to be um, even more uh, contrasted so you're going to see a lot of um, form coming out of the gray paper so now I'm pushing elements back into space I'm also stylizing helping the line work by establishing a thick and thin hierarchy of importance. So it's just a matter of uh, creating the right sort of balance and um, an attention. So looking at this is a there are reflections bouncing into the eyes. It seems to be almost um, uh, have a, a slight milky characteristic to the eye itself, which uh, you know indicates age, of course. But um, sun damage, mostly. I think it's the the reason why it shows up. So it's squinting at lights and, you know, okay, some beautiful shadows here and we're building from this area. So again, it's quite hollow. There's a bit of a hollowing out here. 
and a reflected light going into that socket. So we're trying to um, <laughs> draw a lot of things. So of course, you've got the eyebrow hairs that are um, covering a lot of the geometry, you know. So it's cool stuff. Cool, cool. Here we go. Remember where the shadows are coming from, which do, uh, the light's coming from. So the shadows are favoured over onto the, the, the right-hand side of the face. Let's try to keep that uh, in mind. I'm still having a Gandalf moment here. I'm, I, uh, a little bit uh, perturbed by it. All right, so we're getting closer and closer and closer. So now these things, you can see that I'm constantly pushing thick and thin uh, lines to create a sense of drama. And, uh, you know, uh, ooh. Yeah, that'll do. So, um, it's it's a it's a balancing act, isn't it? It's really part of the uh, the the business. Remember, uh, when you draw, you're not a camera, so you're not um, you're not subject to all of the laws of realism of. Uh, the real world so you can exaggerate you have permission to exaggerate so it's like in animation animation is an exaggeration of uh, of action and performance and uh, you know you need that sense of you know exaggeration otherwise it won't won't feel right won't be true same thing with drawing. So it's a process of um, uh, investigation. So you're investigating um, shapes, contours, lines. You know, the benefit of drawing tonally like this is you can explore seven elements of art in one. So seven elements of art, the elements of art, of course, components that uh, make up usually all art, but, um, you know, they have certain um, propensity to favor a one direction over another. So you could say at the moment, this is very, you could describe it as being linear. That's one of the first um, elements of art. So seven elements one is line two is shape so shape is line creating a context right three is say form form are the sculptural elements or the three-dimensional so that's Put a little 3D next to that. Four would be tone. So that's contextual. So it's light and dark. Um, contextual because something that's light is darker under certain lighting conditions. Something that's dark is lighter under certain conditions. So it's contextual. Five would be texture. 
And the texture is very interesting in drawing because I'm making a texture of, of hair. Soon I'll be using white um, pencils and paint. And that's creating a texture of smoothness and shine and reflectivity. Six is color. Uh, color is also contextual depending on, it's like tone, tone and color. Um, it's also contextual because it's, it depends on how, how light that situation is, uh, the environment. And of course, the last one is space, final frontier. Space is um, an expression of um, the object or the thing that you're drawing within a greater context, within a, within a, a, a physical pro, you know, area. In this case, I'm indicating that by having this sort of a window frame, which is a compositional tool to center and um, give some sort of purpose to the drawing. So it's a, it comes from graphic design. It's a graphic design uh, construct in a way that, uh, that I've, I can use to uh, create a better sense of unity and, and balance. So it's compositionally, if rather than floating, you know, on the, on the page, if it was just floating on the page, it wouldn't have negative space, for example, which is the space referencing around the object. Wow, there's a lot of drawing here. This is it. This is, um, yeah, so, oh, okay, cool. Oh, I see. One, you can find, I went down a creek then, and I found another creek, found another road. I said, that's interesting. That line leads to that line, and oh, there, I'm back home. So, so I'm just going to lightly, uh, actually, let's help the nose. Perhaps I'll be careful. Yeah, be careful. You know, black changes a lot of the uh, qualities of color. So color here is implied by use of a of a brown or red red brown pencil, and that gives the drawing a warmth that approximates the warmth of flesh itself. So it's a nice way of uh, implying color. Um, properties without using a lot of color. There's just so much here. Um, you know, I, I finish one line and I think, oh my God, that's this. I've missed this one and this one and this one and this one. Um, so it's very... Uh, scary sometimes how many um what have i started here um i don't know just keep going just keep going just keep going um let's do some i like the 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 way that uh the pencil, other than the shading, the cross hatching, you know, the hatching, which are lines that are parallel rather than just um, scribbling. So that's a really nice organic uh, texture or element that I can play with, uh, which is good because, you know, otherwise this is e easily the, 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 the most detailed face I've ever drawn. <clears throat> in this um, series. So, um, welcome to the lockdown. This is how I entertain myself. Um, and I encourage you to pick up a pencil and draw something maybe not as scary uh, <laughs> in terms of details as uh, John Hurt. But, you know, nonetheless, I think... Uh, you know, it's something that uh, you can you can build. Every time you draw a face, every single time you learn something new. 
So it's uh, something that you can continue to build uh, build on. this lessons to be learnt on every single line, every corner. Every little turn. Okay, so it looks like there's a, some curves that I'm also missing here and about. Okay, I'll simplify this a bit. Yeah, just simplify it a bit. That's good. So I can afford to heavy out these lines, I think, to make them stand out a little bit from the collar. some skin under here so the white's going to help this quite a lot there's a lot of detail here but I'm hoping that the white will build up a lot more structure um, help with the contrasts of all these forms oh this is quite uh, intentionally shattered shaded shattered it's shattered it's sh the shadow the shadow knows so listen to the shadow Might be able to help that with a black pen, a black uh, brush. Um, make it a little bit more prominent. Maybe I'll finish the ribbon while I'm down here. I think um, just uh, clean up some some lines. He said before the line went awry and ruined the whole thing. So I've taken on the uh, extra responsibility of making little name ribbons. Ha ha. Okie doke. Here we go. Right. First, first order of business. The hottest port points of light. So the brightest areas which are would be like reflections. And that's important to distinguish so that you know from what level of shade you are progressing to. Right, so you now know how dark the dark is, but how light is the light. Okay, let's see. So these are little hills, little knolls and things, so they require some attention for sure right now over on this side it looks a little bit less like the other eye because it's catching some different lights and it's revealing a little bit more about the eyelid there is a little bit of I guess can I I don't know I would I don't I don't think I'd, I'd put a light in there because there isn't one there's only reflection in there from looking at the photo so be careful if you see me make a mistake yell out and say stop Okay, so I think uh, we're gonna. I think I'll put in some, maybe a, a little rim light over on the right-hand side. 
So it's not in the reference, but um, it tends to make the forms more solid. If you have more than white, more than sorry, one light source. If you have two light sources that sort of you know fill in or break up some of the the form um, and the shadows. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to create that. very sunny outside but I'm <clears throat> absolutely involved in this all right so oh we have to should we put in I don't know if we can maybe towards there yeah that'll do all right so we've got a soft pencil now this is a white and we're going to continue on building up the white um, contrasts but we're not coloring in here we're just building up referencing the uh, the lighting any of the areas of the ref of the photograph the reference photograph that is light and therefore catching light diffusing light reflecting light some some of the areas some of the things scattering light all of this stuff so without uh, going into too much uh, lighting descriptions is to create a sculptural um, completion of the forms i'm going to help the, the the white pencil obviously does not like going over black uh, pencil lines so but I will go over this with a brush pen with white, white paint just to help it. So again, you know, you're, you're um, drawing things that are shiny and uh, have the reflectivity. Skin is a, a very interesting, has very interesting properties. So it's translucent and reflective and, uh, you know, it has different reflective properties. So, you know, at some points the, the skin is, is shiny and smooth and others they're rough and dull. So that, you know, even though when they're catching the light, the light is very soft. The highlights are very soft. Remember how folds work, right? So that light is catching on the top of these furrows, these wrinkles. Yeah. So remember the light. Always think of, you know, you're putting, um, you're referencing light. You're drawing light. You're drawing with light here. So think about what that means and what should be lit and what shouldn't be lit. Right. So light's coming in from that direction. So you have to light you have to draw it with that in mind. Okay, so obviously at the top of forms and left of forms, you'll find a highlight. And that uh, is true of um, most of the things here, most of the elements here. I mean, there is a little bit of, you know, reflected light, bounce light or whatever happening here and there. But you know, basically, that's the that's the the general lay of this this country, this land that I'm drawing. The continent, the um, the very interesting country of John Hurt. Okay, all right, getting there. Now the brows stick out a little bit more, so it's safe to say that they'll be they'll catch a little bit more light. Um, the brows, the flesh part of the brows, not the uh, not the hair itself. 
so I guess it's to you know keep something more or less within the context of how things work in the real world um, and it's nice to sort of find those elements and while you find them and you depict them with a pencil you're understanding how it works right so it's sort of like the best way to understand something is to draw it if you don't understand something you know if you're a heart surgeon or something and you want to understand the heart if you're studying anatomy you're studying medicine or whatever draw it you'll understand it better trust me if you draw something you know the uh, you peeling away um, confusion and creating a uh, an understanding right so here we go the big massive uh, nose the schnoz the schnozola we're getting into a shape which we can pretty much play with uh, this is something that um, it's really up to you how much you want to distort and push and pull it seems to be very pliant and able to still look like a nose no matter how much you distort it so it's because it's a simple shape and um, it's uh, easy to um, change it's easy to you know um, distort here we go so again light coming down creates uh, light on one side of the wrinkle and um, of this, these forms so as much as possible try to keep that in mind when you're putting in the highlights obey the position of the light it's your guiding light it's your north star <laughs> because everything you put in there if you respect the lighting coming down everything all these little details they could some of them could be out you know completely out um, it could be too many it could be too less so there's certain um, stylization or a simplification of the process that's bit oh it should have this should have a darker uh, tone to it just to help that cutting of the highlight next to the shadow so sh highlights tend to look really sharp when they're cr right up next to a dark shadow like that and really there that exists in real life if you were to get a magnifying glass out and study the photograph you'll see that pretty much happening in real life you know the the highlight exists in a uh, beautiful context with the with the shadows so it's a beautiful photograph and I'm, I'm very grateful for that uh, I think it's a, from a Saatchi exhibition but I uh, don't know I'm just uh, pleased that uh, I can get this um, these forms here you know they're really magical they're really really good it's such a lot of it's such a it's a beautiful experience you know this um, the drawing of this beautiful man's face it's just uh, making me very very happy with uh, the results whether or not it looks like him eh, you know it doesn't matter at the end of the day I'm just enjoying the the, um, the possibilities of this uh, journey 
of discovering new territory, you know. I'm exploring this new land, this new continent. Look what I found, this great, beautiful continent of um, John Hurt. So, wow. Such a magnificent um, spectacle. Really, really interesting. Very, very interesting. Some lot of things happening here. Okay, so now we're building up these. This is the chin that's propping out a little bit from, you've got the lip and then you've got the chin. So it's, uh, makes sense that it's going to catch on one side at least and you know, maybe you'll cross the, the nub of the chin. It'll catch uh, some of that light. Again, respect the light direction, you know. Okay, that'll do. Uh, put some details in here and there. Hmm. So, okay. <laughs> here we go. Leather has like sharper, sharp... Um, highlights and things because it's you know so glossy all right that'll do um what else can we do here get into more mischief okay um, this is a brush pen this is a uh, a zig um, brush and because it's a brush it's got ink in the handle and you basically squeeze the pigment out the ink the ink out it's not Indian ink Indian ink it's cloggy to put it mildly it's very black of course but you know which is great for contrast and things but a never found i've always found indian ink very difficult to manipulate and control okay so what i'm doing here is creating a dialogue that is more um, truthful if not to the to the reference certainly to the elements in the face so they're, they're um, not exaggerated, but uh, um, made more apparent, more stronger. The ink is a lot blacker than the black pencil, you know, and it's very helpful. So part of the drawing in space is to create a separation between some of the forms, like the nose, for example, stands out from the rest of the face. So it makes sense to, you know, outline that, but you wouldn't outline everything because uh, it just creates a too much emphasis on, on the linear. It started out linear, but it's now more form that we're drawing here. And we need to, sorry, we need to um, have concentrating. We need to think about the relevant uh, amount of light and dark in the, um, in the image so keep it under some form of uh, control so outlines you know contours on the outer edge of the forms of the face they're pretty safe to they're a safe bet to ex accentuate and uh, you know thicken uh, but um, the rest of the uh, stuff I wouldn't 
I'm just thinking, I don't know if I, I'll thicken the lines around the coat. That's what I'll do. But I won't color it in, even though it's a black jacket, probably, or dark jacket. Um, I'll resist. Or maybe I'll just do the shadows. I don't know what color I'll put in the background yet. Might use black. I think that might be a logical choice. What an exceptional man. What a fantastic face. Have I got the likeness? Don't know, but does it matter? Really? Let's put a, a fill in this area. So once and for all, we're referencing that light source coming in from the top left. Uh, that one too would cover that. That should be all right. Yeah, you know what? I will. I think I might try to fill that a little bit in. That'll do. So uh, it's a uh, interesting, interesting. All right. So we're going to get in with uh, black uh, in the in the sky. But just before I do that, I'll just move the skull out of the way. Uh. And uh, I'll look for something in particular that I have here, which is another marker. It's a, it's a Posca marker. And these are great, aren't they, for uh, coloring in because they don't go through the, um, they don't go through the paper, which is a complete bonus. What I'm after is a, no, not that one. I'm after a brush pen, not that one either. Hmm. Where there it is. So this is a brush pen, so that it's a pump at the top. It still has a ball bearing in it, so you shake it to mix the paint inside, and you just simply pump it on the back end until a drop of paint comes through and wets the bristles. And then um, you can continue. And the beauty about it is that it's uh, all of the um, opaqueness of the other Posca markers, but now it has thick and thin properties to it, which is handy because I want to draw some. Actually, I won't use, I won't use that. I'll use a thinner marker for that. I'll do that in a sec. But I want to put some shine up here and down there just a touch so think about where that lights hitting you know the um, the light from the, the the source the spotlight it's catching the certain parts of the hair and leaving others in shadow. And then some parts of the hair are lighter. They're gray or something, and therefore they're probably more reflective than other parts of the hair. So they would have a, a, a property, different property. Okay, let's thicken up this highlight down here too, I think might sort of get a chance to make it a bit stronger so it's you know as I said to you before it can be a balancing act of uh, details that you put in you know um, and some details you hold back because uh, the nature of the beast is that uh, you're creating a narrative here and you need to be in control of that narrative so if you're just referencing, um, you know, putting down everything you see without editing it, then um, it can be, oh, the light should be down to there. It can be, um, it 
can give you an issue, right? So everything sort of um, can fill in too much. There could be too much uh, detail all of a sudden. And that could uh, take away the impact of, say, the eyes, the expression of the eyes, which, you know, hopefully um, you put a lot of uh, effort into into creating. Too much. Um, yeah, you have to go gingerly with this uh, this effect because too much draws attention to itself, and that's not what you want. So you see how I'm just helping with the the highlight that I've already established with the pencil. So I'm just making it stronger in certain areas, but not all over. So if you did it all over, it would become superfluous to, to actually draw the, the white in the first place. So everything has a hierarchy, right? Like a in level of importance, a level of detail, a level of light and dark. So that seems to be hmm. okay. So what what's happening here? There's a there's a reflection on the edge of the lip. Uh, something is happening at the top. We might leave that alone because I'm not all convinced that uh, this will be helpful on that side. So we'll try and um, what can we do up here to get into more mischief? Okay, so everything else, uh, i just clean the tip of this pencil. Let's sharpen a little bit. And just blend in some of these white strokes here. See how beautiful and soft this uh, Prismacolor is. It goes, it likes to go over most of these surfaces and even if it hasn't got, still hasn't got the tooth left from the paper, if it's, you covered it too quickly, too, um, too much maybe with the brown pencil or something, um, it'll still add a pinch um, help with uh, building the relevant amount of, of uh, highlights. It'll still help. Wow, okay. Very, very interesting face. All right, so not finished yet. Get some, this is a finer point. Uh, and uh, going to try to ca catch some of these wayward hairs and smaller tufts around the, the, around the surface of the face. That's nice. I like this uh, this hair from the eyebrow, and there's some others that are coming out as well. And even though it's not as visible on the other end of the face, the other side, we need to sort of ref reference it somehow, just to match it. So it makes sense if you've got. You know, a 
lighter hairs here and there. Makes sense to balance them left and right. Okay. Yeah. Not a hundred percent sure about the likeness, but uh, I'll let it lie. As I said, it's uh, it's become a moot point with uh, with this. Let's help out these um, leather uh, shiny bits. Leather's another fun uh, thing to draw because um, it has certain uh, characteristics of depth and intensity of shadows, and and because it's glossy, uh, a lot of it is glossy. Then you know it has a tendency to be highly ref highly reflective depending on how, how new the leather is I guess but um, it can offer a very interesting texture that's nice look at those little lines and so many little lines you could go on this you could go on and on and on and on and on but let's not let's let's try to end this let's give it an ending right okay nearly there let's go it's a black posca and i'm going to cut in and create uh, a definite negative space environment around this, these shapes. I am not going right up to the contours. I'm going to leave it a gap, just a space so that I'm respecting the, uh, the lines. Lots of fun. Very interesting face. So even with uh, three colors, you've got the, the trois crayon method, like classical uh, style drawing, like uh, Angre, a neoclassicist, and he was obviously referring to Raphael and Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, you know, the other turtles. Um, and uh, how they drew so you know they used many different materials but uh, a lot of times they would use the three crayon method like this red or uh, um, terracotta earthy reddy brown black and white and today it's really good because we can get them in a non-messy form because they would have had to use charcoal which is terrible terribly messy so it's a great 
it's a great material and does some beautiful things but you know I'd, my hands would be completely covered if I was uh, using that we don't need to do that <laughs> so I'm just I think I'll just cut in and then I'll use a bigger uh, a bigger pen to catch the uh, the rest of it fill it in so it's just like painting a win around a window or door Here we go now get a thicker one let's have a look what have we got here to play with um what's that there's posca there we go nice chunky thick one like a graffiti pen beautiful and again you know look how beautiful and smooth and it dries flat unlike Indian ink which is streaky and pools to form this metallic um, shine it's very difficult to work with and my god if you drop it ooh. I used to be paranoid about Indian ink dropping because we had artist desks which were tilted and that just meant that you know it's a, an accident waiting to happen here we go so now now he said confidently without knowing what what he was going to say uh, I'm going to name him. So let's make sure we've got the the spelling right. Um, and there's very little spelling, so I've just um, embarrassed myself by showing you how stupid I am. Uh, his name is John, J O H N. His second name is Hurt. It can be simpler than that H U R T. So that uh, black is going to dry beautifully and flat. And um, this is John Hurt. And let's have a look at the before um, shots of him. There he is there. So this is not Gandalf. This is John Hurt. And I'll prove that by finding the photograph that I am channeling. There we go. So that's John Hurt. And this is my caricature of his, of him. And this is Franz Cantor saying to you, I will catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.